Hello guys and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be an eye color tutorial which was requested to me in my last video. I'm going to start off by launching Spark AR Studio and um, they do already have a built-in eye color template but I don't particularly like theirs. I just don't think it's any good. So we're going to start off with a new face tracking um, project. I'm going to change my video model but this is totally optional. You don't have to. And then um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rename my face tracker. This just helps me keep myself organized. But underneath this, I'm going to right click, add null object. I'm going to name this null object um, eyes. Under this, I'm going to add another null object and I'm going to name it left. Under this, I'm going to right click, add plane. And I'm going to name this plane left eye. This is going to host our left eye contact. We're going to go over to the right and go ahead and change our size to 0 0.16 by 0 0.16. Then I'm going back to my left null object and I'm duplicating it. I'm going to name my duplicate right and I'm going to name the plane underneath it right eye. And all the sizing will already uh, be there because it was a duplicate, so you don't have to worry about that. After this, we're going to go to View. Um, we're going to hit View Patch Editor, and then we're dragging our face tracker into the patch editor. Um, if you go over, you can see on the side of the face tracker patch, it says Face. We're going to pull from there, and we're going to search for Eyeball. Once you found it, you're just going to click it and it's going to automatically add it to your patch editor. And I'm just going to fix up the spacing in between um, my little patches. After this, we're going to head on over to our left eye plane and I'm just going to click uh, position and rotation so that it comes up on my patch editor. We're going to link this accordingly. So we're going to go from left iris position to position and left eyeball rotation to rotation. And we're going to repeat these steps and do the exact same thing for the right eye plane. So click position, click rotation, and then link it to where it goes. Um, so rotation to rotation this is pretty much the base of the project um, now we're gonna go to our left eye material add material and um, I'm just gonna rename the material eye color now we're gonna go over to our right I plane and instead of creating a new material we're going to just click on the material we just created then we're going to go back into the material and change the shader type to flat and we're going to uncheck all of our advanced render options so now I'm going to go ahead and launch my safari and this is probably the most important part of this entire tutorial because um, the iris that we're going to search for, the one that you pick, has to, is kind of what determines how realistic your contacts look or your, you know, your eye color. So, I recommend really choosing a photo that is like a real eyeball photo. Um, just because these photos are going to have realistic qualities to them, obviously, because they're real. So, like, it'll have really good reflections it's going to give you that kind of like glass 3d look um so don't go for an already pre-cut out one and don't go for a picture like this that has the edges cut off and also pay attention to the detail like these are really detailed and that's exactly what you want so i'm going to pick this one i'm going to right click copy image and then i'm going to launch photoshop but you're free to use whatever photo editing software you have I'm going to go ahead and create new and I'm going to pick clipboard because it's the size of what I just copied. 
but I am changing my resolution to 85 and then hitting create. First thing I'm going to do here is unlock the base layer and change the color to black so that I can see what I'm doing and then I'm just going to hit um, command V and paste my image. Now we're going to go to the left toolbar and click on the elliptical marquee tool. From the middle of the iris, I'm going to pull out holding shift and option on my keyboard. And this is going to maintain the same size of the circle. And once I'm happy with the size, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I just want to make sure I have the size right. I'm going to click, right click on it, select um, inverse, and then I'm changing my feather up at the top to 25 and then I'm hitting delete on my keyboard as you can see the feather is important because it's going to give you that feathery look on the outsides of your cutout I'm taking my eraser tool and I'm trying to mimic the size of the middle so that I can punch this out and make it transparent so I'm just tracking by um, removing the visibility of my background and I think we're good Now, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit because I do want to make my eraser tool br my eraser brush uh, bigger. And I'm going to start taking off from the top just because I found that when you're tracking your face, your eyelid tends to cover part of your eye anyway. So this is going to make it look more natural um, and more realistic. So now we're going to go to image. I know it gets cut off here, but I'm in image adjustments and then desaturate. Um, you want to make sure that your iris picture is black and white um, so that you can change the color yourself. Now I'm just messing with the levels. So again, image levels um, to make sure I get some nice contrast in there, some nice definition. And this also adds to how real your contact looks once you have it in Sparky R. So once you're happy <laughs> with what you've done or, you know, once you've achieved something similar, I'm going to file export, export quick um, as PNG. And then I'm just going to name this Iris and save it on my desktop. Now what you want to do is you want to take a brush, a white brush, a white soft <laughs> brush, and you kind of want to size it to about the si the width of the the image not the whole image but like the side the side of it um you, you'll see what i'm doing you kind of want to mimic the shape of the iris picture that you have um so i'm just doing this until i get it right basically um and you want to make sure that it's not smaller or bigger so really try to outline um the best that you can and I totally forgot to create a new layer, so I'm uh, Command Z, create a new layer now, and I'm gonna yeah, make sure you're doing it on a new layer. Don't don't mess up like me. Now I'm going to canvas size because I'm actually going to make my canvas bigger. Um, I'm extending the height of it so that my my trace, my soft brush trace doesn't cut off at the edge because we don't want any hard edges. We want this to be really feathery. And I'm just filling in, uh, filling it in with black. So <clears throat> now I'm going in and tracing it. I, okay. I didn't like that. <laughs> now I think it looks good. And um, you can go as slow as you want. I'm going pretty slow with this. Then I'm going to take my eraser tool and do the same exact thing where I erase the middle part. And you want to make sure that, that this part is transparent um, so that you're 
real like center <laughs> comes goes through and then I'm going to take my eraser tool and I'm going to chop off the top as well again except on this one I'm doing a lot more I'm basically doing a half circle making sure that I'm erasing most of this the outer sides um, and making sure that there aren't any hard edges because like I said we want this to be really feathery So once you're happy with it, you want to go to, um, <clears throat> you actually want to go to your toolbar effects, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And I think I'm going to set the radius. This is just going to make it more feathery, but I'm going to set my radius to 29. And now it looks really feathery. So now I'm going to file export, quick export as PNG. And I'm going to name this iris overlay because that's exactly what it's going to be. And you'll see in a minute. Now I'm going back into my Spark AR, making sure that my shader type is flat, and then I'm adding a texture, which is going to be your iris. So as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and send, I'm actually going to press no compression, make sure you're doing no compression on all of your images. And then the first thing that I'm going to do actually is go to capabilities and go to actually go to face tracking and set it to high so that it's tracking your iris really closely rather than kind of loosely which is what the normal one does now i'm going to go and send that to my phone so i can see i can get a good size reference so <laughs> what i'm looking at right now is i need to make the width of each contact a little bit bigger so i'm going back into my plane and I'm changing it to 0 0.18 on both widths. Sending this back to my phone to uh, get a size reference. Now I'm going to go back into my material and change it to add. And yes, they look very intense right now. So we're just going to put down the opacity. And then we're going to click alpha. In the alpha, the texture that you want to add is going to be your iris overlay. And as you can see, immediately the difference that's, that that overlay makes is great. So now it looks a lot more natural. And again, remember, no compression. Um, and I'm going to test this out on my phone and see how the opacity is. So it doesn't look bad at all, but I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit more. Continue to send that off to my phone. This is this entire part is now basically trial and error. So you're going to like keep sending it to your phone over and over again until you're happy with it. Now we're taking... Um, under diffuse color and I'm going to go for like a baby blue. So I'm sending this off to my phone yet again to see how it looks. And um Oh, I forgot to turn on my environment. Okay, so we're going to turn on environment. Change it to color because as you can see it now made it purple. You don't want that. So I'm going to mess around with this until I get my desired blue. And the reason you want your environment on is because it takes your environment into consideration. So it literally takes your natural eyeball into consideration and it kind of brings out like the natural definition of it. So this is also going to help make it look more realistic. And it's also going to help give it that like glassy kind of look. So I'm sending this to my phone. And you want to cut your opacity in half at this point because you're kind of double coloring it. Um, but through t trial and error, I figured out that having the two colors versus one looks better in my opinion. Um, but you're free to mess around with the settings. So uh, now I'm just going to speed up my whole process of me <laughs> uh, sending it to my phone over and over again, trying to figure out... Um, which color values suit 
me of course it's gonna look different on everybody's eye because not everyone has the same eye color i have brown eyes um so i try to make mine look as natural as possible and that's what you're gonna see me doing here So throughout this process, I actually found that by switching my blend mode to screen instead of add, I get better results with this particular iris, but it depends on the image that you end up choosing from Google. So at this point, I'm really happy with the color. I think it looks really good. Um, I've tested it out on my phone and this is, this is honestly it. <laughs> like this is all that you had to do. So at this point, I am going to go ahead and go on my face tracker and add the final touch. I'm going to search for right eye closed and then I'm going to search for left eye closed. Um, I'm going to drag this out and search for not on both. And I'm just going to copy and paste it. It's faster. Then I'm going to go to my left eye and click visible and then go to my right eye plane and click visible so this is going to make it so that when your eyes are closed you are not seeing your eye contact slash eye color um so that it looks more realistic um because you know when you close your eyes you don't see your eye color so and i'm really loving the way that this turned out so i think at this point um i'm going to add a couple more things to this filter I'm just going to fix my saturation a little bit and then um, send it to my phone to check. I think at this point I'm going to add a couple of makeup things just because I love a good pair of eye contacts with like some eyeliner and some blush so this could be a really great base for any makeup filter and also i think i'm gonna upload this entire project to gumroad for sale and i'll have a special discount code on my in my description box so it's probably going to be just youtube for five dollars off if you don't want to go through the trouble of doing everything that i do here <laughs> so i'm just gonna add um a face mesh and this is gonna be my actually this is going to be my retouch and now i'm creating the material for this and i'm gonna name it retouch and then i'm changing my shader type to retouch and i'm just gonna leave it as it is um typically i like to put this lower but for the sake of this tutorial i'm leaving it as it is the next thing that I'm going to add is going to be eyeliner. Um, and I'll share it with you guys just a little tip because I do makeup filters as well. And this particular tip has helped me out a lot. So as always, make sure that your shader type is material or is flat and then uncheck all of your advanced render options. I'm just going to go ahead and use one of the eyeliners that I use on my filters. And I, this eyeliner will be included in my Gumroad project file if you guys want to purchase it. And you want to unclick the eyes in the face mesh, in the face mesh eyeliner. The reason you want to do this is because when you have eyes checked off, your eyeliner is going to cut off where your eye starts, where it detects your eye. If you don't have it checked then it's going to just appear as you drew the eyeliner. Um, so at this point, I think I'm just adding some blush <laughs> to complete the filter. And I'm going into my face acids and using, um, it, which is provided by Spark AR. So I'm just using the template provided by them. I'm creating a new layer and I do basically all of my makeup in white and I change the colors in spark air so 
so once um once you're happy with the way your blush looks which really is up to you um and just export it And then I'm just going to be uh, creating a new face, face mesh and making this my blush face mesh. Face mesh. Oh my god. Again, make sure that you are putting all of your shader types to flat and that you are unchecking your advanced render options when you don't need them. And also, no compression. <laughs> um, yeah. And it looks super intense when it's like this, but I promise you it looks better once you add color and change the blend modes and lower the opacity. So I'm just playing around with um, a color that I like. And the good thing about doing your makeup in white is that instead of going back and redoing it when you don't like the way the color looks because it, it does look different sometimes um just like you can change the color whenever you want without having to redo something you know and i think that makes it a lot easier because i used to do it the other way so now i'm sending this to my phone just to check how the opacity looks and the color of the blush and adjusting it to my liking. And at the end of this video, I will be um, putting in a video of how it looks on me so that you guys can see how the eye color turned out, the eyeliner looks, and the blush. And I'm not going to lie, I actually really love the way that this filter turned out. Um, it was my first time using that iris because usually I pick a different one, but this one turned out really good. Um, so yeah, again, if you guys don't want to go through this whole process or you want to use the exact same materials I did, including the bonus eyeliner that I use on my own makeup looks, um... You'll be able to purchase it in my Gumroad with a $5 discount code, which is, I'm pretty sure it's going to be, just the code is going to be YouTube. And I'm just going to save this file because now I'm finished and I really liked the outcome. And I'm debating on, well, I was debating on putting this on my actual Instagram, but because I'm selling it. Um, I don't think I'll upload it to my Instagram. And I'll show you guys what it looks like on me. So as you can see, everything looks kind of natural. And I really like the way it turned out. So thank you for watching. Um, let me know if you have any other requests for future videos.